What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here tonight with the season six premiere of How to Get Away with Murder. This is episode number one, and it was titled, Say Goodbye. Oh, my God. After six years, we are getting ready to say our final goodbyes to Annalise Keating and the kids that get on my nerves at times. But, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into the episode. It was a good episode. I enjoyed it. So, let's talk about it. All right, so the episode, it opens up. So we see um, there's a funeral being had, and we see all the kids are there. We don't see Laurel at the funeral, however. But, you know, we see them, um, and then out of nowhere, you can, you know, we see a little boy run, and um, uh, Nate tells him, no, Chris, don't do that. So Chris opens up the casket, and he says, um, stay dead, bitch, it has a gun, and pointing it at Annalise, and she wakes up. And then we see that Annalise is actually in um, rehab. She's in a rehab group, you know, and she does not have her wig on. And now she's going by the name of Karen. I'm like, oh, so Anna Mae, Annalise, and now Karen, huh? So then we see her roommate, and her roommate is just trying to figure out who she is. And she's like, uh, she, she read that. I mean, she kept reading the hell out that woman. So then we see, um, we see her in there in another circle. So this time the counselor, you know, she wants them to go over the exercise that they had, and then exercise, you know, they were they were all at their funeral. I I don't understand the whole purpose of the exercise, and she just wants them to talk about what they saw and who was at their funeral. So she wants Karen to go, and you know, um, you know, Karen tells her, well, you know, she said the people that were at my funeral, they were happy that she was dead because you know she had chosen alcohol over them, and some of her other peers said called bullshit on that. But then she also said, also said that they were upset that it took her so long to die. So then, you know, like I said, the group kind of read into her and was like, you are, um, yeah, that's bullshit. I mean, and she went around the circle and told each and every one of them about themselves. I'm like, well, damn, Annalise, you got to be that cold-blooded and like, damn, wow. So then we also see the group, they have this group activity and the activity is called smack therapy. So on it, they have like some words, I guess that is what, the, what they associate with themselves. Like, cause I know she said she called herself a bitch, fat ass, um, narcissist, a lot of other words. So on, the, on it, they have a little bat and they're just banging on the pillow. And I'm guessing, like I said, the pillow is just, you know, to let out their, their fears, their aggressions, their, you know, their fears, everything that they just hold that's negative in their lives. So, um, so then we see the leader, you know, the uh, counselor, she's talking about, you know, it doesn't always work for everyone. And then Elisa was like, well, what works for you? She says, my vibrator. I'm like, oh, her vibrator. So then, you know, um, she has this card and it says selfish on it. So she says, tell me, what makes you so selfish? And she says, the fact that I'm always putting myself first. And she's like, well, that's not really selfish. Well... And you're, she would be correct. But when it comes to these selfish-ass kids that Annalise has, yes, they always want to tell her how selfish she is, mainly Michaela. Which we're going to talk about Michaela in a little bit, but Michaela is always the one that wants to tell Annalise that she is selfish. Oh, God. How to get away with murder next Thursday. Um, But, yeah, Michaela is always the one that wants to tell her how selfish she is. And I'm just like, really, Michaela? Chill the hell out. So, um... Yeah, she says she's always putting herself first when her friends need her the most. I'm like, well, that's really not selfish. But like I said, according to these kids, anything Annalise does is selfish. Like crazy as hell. All right, so um, then Annalise, she gets a call from Bonnie. So Bonnie tells Annalise that, hey, Emmett's body. His body is actually over in London where they're doing the um, autopsy on his body. And then, you know, she asked her, well, how is rehab going? And Annalise is like, you know what? Rehab is going good. She says, I actually like my counselor. She told me that I need to put myself first. And Bonnie's like, I definitely concur and I agree with her. So then we flash back and we see the night that Annalise found out that Emma was dead. So this night, she, you know, she got a call from Tegan about uh, Emma being dead. So then she's, she's at the bar, mind you. And she's getting, you know, shots. She's getting a shot of vodka, just drinking it. You know, that's her drinking choice of vodka. So then, you know, she's dancing. And then a guy, oops, excuse me. Um, and then a guy comes up behind her. And she starts dancing with him. 
And then the next thing we see, Annalise and this guy are in the bathroom stall and they're doing cocaine. I'm like, well, damn, Annalise. Like, you having that hard of a day? I, I mean, I guess I understand, like, when you deal with them selfish-ass kids that she got, of course. So then we also see that she woke up inside of a hospital and then Bonnie was there and she was asking Bonnie for help. So, you know, then we see her roommate, Annalise's roommate. She's asking her, who is Bonnie? Is that your girlfriend? And it was like, bitch, mind your business. And then, uh, and again, Annalise read like straight dead into her roommate, whose name is Sally or Sandy, one of the two. And, you know, she, you know, Sally's like, I hate my kids. I'm like, well, damn, tell us how you really feel. And she's like, I hate myself for hating my kids. I'm like, wow. Ooh. So then Annalise does tell her, you know what? My name is Annalise Keating. She's like, you know, people think that I killed my husband, but I didn't. But I, however, did help cover up his murder. I'm like, wow, Annalise. You don't know this woman from Tom's Cat. And you tell her all your business. Okay. So then the next morning, Annalise wakes up and Sally is gone. But you can hear the cops outside because one of the guys that was in her um, circle group, he beat up a cook. Because they ran out of bacon. I'm like, wow. So we really beat people up because they ran out of fucking bacon? Okay. So then Annalise does find her roommate who says, you know what? She's here for her and she loves her. I'm like, girl, you don't even know her. But okay. So then Annalise goes back into her room and she, you know, she starts doing that assignment that the council wanted her to do the, you know, prior with the uh, pillow and the uh, the bat. And she just, you know, just starts pounding the pillow and just, you know, letting everything out. Letting everything loose. I mean, everything. Everything. Loose. Alright, so then we got Bonnie. So Bonnie is talking to the kids. Now, the kids are wondering about Annalise. They're like, you know, since she's re relapsed and she's in rehab... What if the board finds, what if, you know, the board finds out, won't they take her license away from her? And Bonnie's like, no need to worry about that. And the reason why she's saying no need to worry about that is because Annalise is in there under an alias. And, you know, um, so the kids also want to go to the FBI. But Bonnie's like, no, we do not go to the FBI. Like, we're already being investigated. Why would we put a bigger target on our backs? Exactly. These kids do not think anything fucking through. Like, I get it, you want to find Chris. Like, I can do it without Laurel, but you guys, I get it, you want to find Chris. So then Michaela, you know, we see her. She's in, I guess, Laurel's room, and she's crying. And then, you know, the boys, they found information on Michaela's dad. And they also find out that Annalise helped defend him. So Asher's, he, Asher wants to tell Michaela. Connor says, no, we don't tell Michaela. Like, we need to wait for Annalise to come back. He's like, but what if Annalise doesn't come back? He says, well, we need her to come back because I want to know why she chose me. And then I also wonder why she chose Michaela. So then, you know, Frank comes in and he tells Oliver he needs his help to ping Laura's location. And, you know, um, Michaela then comes downstairs and she tells him, like, hey, New West is outside and I really don't want to see him right now. But we do see her go outside to talk to New West. And, you know, she he's talking about how, you know, he really likes her. He wants to be with her. And then Asher comes outside and he's like, hey, Laura wants to, you know, talk to you. She's in, the house. She's in her somewhere, wherever she is. I'm like, wherever she is? That? Okay. And then Asher, <clears throat> he's asking um, New West, like, what are your intentions with Michaela? And then they leave. I'm like, really? Because, you know, New West said, I'm not working with the FBI, so you're all good. So then we also do see Frank and Oliver and Connor. So they're, just, like I said, they're trying to ping Laurel's location, but Laurel's phone keeps jumping from place to place to place. And, you know, um, Frank is, he's still upset because, you know, someone was able to sneak into, in, into Connor and Oliver's place, take baby Chris. And, you know, which I would be upset too. Like, God damn, like what were y'all doing to not notice that someone had snuck in and took the baby. So then, you know, they were like, well, you know, it could have happened to you. Um, but you know, Laurel didn't want him with you. Laura decided to choose us to be gardeners. He's like, that's not, no. They were like, yes, it is true. So then we also do see Connor. And he wonders if, you know, they're dead. I'm like, I don't want baby Chris to be dead, but I would love it if Laurel is dead. I'm okay with that. 
So then Oliver wants to come up with a plan B, and Oliver also tells him, no, they're not dead. And I'm like, I would pray that Laurel's dead. So like I said, Oliver wants to do a plan B. Connor says, no, don't do that. So then we see Michaela and Asher, they're talking. And Asher's asking Michaela, like, who are you emailing? She says, I'm emailing the adoption agency. You know, since we can't find Laurel, at least I can probably how to find out information about my birth parents. So then, you know, they start to talk about New West and their relationship. And she's like, you know, I'm worried about with the relationship. I'm worried that once he finds out who I am, who we are, he won't want to have anything to do with me. And I'm like, well, that's a possibility. But I mean, he already sees that you guys are not good people. But once he finds out you guys, oh, oh yeah, that's right. And once he finds out you guys murdered Sam. Mm. Yeah, once he finds out you guys murdered Sam, his dad. Hmm. He is not going to want to have anything to do with you. And the fact that you lied about it all last season. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So then we see Frank. He calls Laurel. And he leaves a message for Laurel. So then Bonnie comes in. And she's like, you know, I wonder if Connor is right. And, you know, because um, they think that maybe. So at one point in the episode, they were talking about maybe, you know, Bonnie. Not Bonnie. Annalise. Chris and Laura, maybe all three of them were together. But, you know, Frank is like, there's no way that Laura would leave. And then, too, there's this toy that little Chris likes. He says there's no way she would have left with this without this toy because he would cry without it. So, Frank doesn't think that um, Laura left on her own, which Laura was kidnapped. I'm pro again, I wholeheartedly hope Laura is dead. Just saying, I hope Laura's dead. So then we see Michaela. She goes to see New West. And she tells him, like, hey, I want you to. So then she also tells him, hey, Laurel is gone as well. She took Chris. You know, that's my best friend. I don't even know where she is. And she says, if you, she says, you have to promise me you won't leave me. He's, and she says, if you do, I will take this off and put it somewhere. Somebody's penis. And I'm like, okay. Whatever. I'm going to need Michaela to love herself first before she tries to get with any man. Because I just don't think that Michaela loves herself enough. She might have enough self-confidence in herself, but I don't believe she loves herself. I really don't. Okay, so then we see Nate. So Nate is at um, Bonnie's office. And he's asking Bonnie, like, who is the medical examiner that is doing the autopsy on Emma's body? At first, she tells him, like, I can't tell you that. But then she does eventually give him the information of who the medical examiner is. So then we see Nate. He goes to visit the medical examiner. And he's like, because he's, what Nate is trying to make sure that nothing happens to the um, body. Much like what happened with his dad last season. So the medical examiner tells him like, hey, I can't do anything with the body. He's like, why? He says, because the body is gone. He's like, where is it gone to? Well, the body, like I said before, the body is in London. So the firm had the body shipped to London because that's where the funeral is going to be. And that's where the autopsy is being performed at. So then he's like, well, who signed off on this? And he says, um, a partner from the firm. And it was Tegan. So then we see Nate go to Tegan's office. And, you know, he's asking Tegan about, you know, why is the body in London? She says, yeah, it sounds kind of odd to me too. But, you know, my boss is one that done, so I signed off on it. And then, you know, uh, hold on. So he asked her, was there anything on the autopsy, anything from it? Yeah, she says, no. Um, it's going to probably be a few days before we hear anything from that. So then also, Tegan tells him, like, stop talking about stuff. And he's like, Castillo could have had this place booked. He said, well, good. That means that they'll, they'll, they know I'm coming after them. And, you know, she tells him, like, you know, um, Emmett was my friend. You're not. So you need to get out of here. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, hmm. I was kind of confused for a whole minute about this whole thing with Emmett's death. Because we, I mean, and I have to go back and look at my notes from last year because last season, earlier this season, well, last season, earlier this year, I have to go back and look at my notes. And I do, rem I remember, this, I have the season finale notes in here. And in the season finale episode, what I remember what happened was that Governor Burkhead, you know, she was talking about um, some people that were involved. I, I forgot if it was Little Nathan Death or if it was just with um, Jorge Castillo. But she, you know, she named Emmett as a person of interest in it. And then you guys remember, Emma was in his office, you know, having a seizure. And then Tegan went in there, and that's when she called Annalise. So we don't really know what happened, but we just know that Emmett is dead.
Um. So then we later see Nate. He's at his house and he is Googling Tegan. And some information comes on because she is now the managing firm of the part of um of Kaplan and Gold. So then um, Annalise calls him and, you know, she asks him to come pick her up from the airport because she has left rehab. So then she asks him, like, so is there anything on him? He says, yeah, the medical examiner ruled it a heart attack, so no foul play, which we know there's foul play in this. So then, you know, she texts the kids telling them she's back home and to come over to her house. So, you know, um, we see Michaela. She's the, one that, she's the one that got the text message that we saw, and she was with New West. So once she left New West, New West got a phone call from his mom, who was actually, you know, talking like she was somewhere else, but she was downstairs watching from him, watching him from his window. And I'm like, yeah, that mama's gonna be a problem. Like that mama is going to be a big, huge fucking problem. That she's gonna be a problem for us. All right, you guys. So we also saw Tegan. Tegan was being questioned about Emma's death. Now, she said, you know, um, Emmett didn't seem like someone who was going to commit suicide. And then she also mentions he, there's a possibility that he was poisoned. And, you know, then we see her when she called Annalise and told, she told Annalise that he was dead. And that's when Annalise was at the bar. So then we see Tegan, you know, she's at, well, we see Tegan as the person that was interviewing her. She's like, have you guys investigated, you know, the governor? He's like, oh, you know, we can't tell you anything about that. Um... So then we also do see a scene where Tegan called Annalise. She's like, you know what? I just want to talk to a friend and girlfriend. Get better soon. So then to close out the episode, you guys. So we see Annalise. She's back at her place. She has the kids there. And, you know, that exercise she did at her rehab where they would be in that pillow. Well, she has the kids on that too where they're being out the fears, their shame, guilt, and lies. So Annalise wants them to bury Laurel. And, you know, Michaela's like, we can't do that. She's like... And um, and Liz is like, Michaela, Laurel does not need our help. Laurel has never needed our help. Laurel is resilient, which she really is. But I wish, and, uh, like I said, you guys, I, I, just, I just really hope and pray Laurel's dead. So then Michaela's like, I'm going to the FBI. And, uh, you know, and Liz is like, there's no need for that because Frank and Bonnie have already done that. And we see Frank and Bonnie with the FBI. They're at Laurel's place and they're, you know, sweeping everything. So then we also see later, in the, we also see, closing out the episode, where Tegan was in Emma's office and she had his glasses in her hand and she threw his glasses in the trash can and said, boy, bye. And I'm just like, hmm, Tegan, what are you up to? Like, it, it just begs a lot of questions when it comes to Tegan. I don't think, I, I, I don't think Tegan would kill Emmett, but I don't know. So, um, so then, you know, uh, where am I at? So then we see New West's mom. So she has a case, uh, case with Sam's name. And then there's a number that was withheld that texts her saying, Annalise is back. And I'm wondering how, I'm wondering if that is, um, you know, what is it, Sam's sister, uh, Hannah. Because we haven't saw Hannah in a few, we haven't saw Hannah. When's the last time we saw Hannah? It's been a while since we saw Hannah. So then we see Frank, he's in, you know, he's in the room and he notices his picture frame of Laurel and little Chris. So he goes and gets the picture frame and he opens up the picture frame and in it, there's an envelope in there. So he opens up the envelope and when he opens up the envelope, there's a key he pulls out. And I'm like, hmm. Like it's a lot of questions that have to be answered. A lot of questions that have to be answered. So then we go back to the kids and um, Annalise has now Michaela beating up the pillow. So Michaela starts beating the pillow. At first she wasn't into it, but then she does get into it. And then Ash's old big mouth ass tells, you know, uh, Michaela that Annalise knew her father. I'm like, are you serious? Really, Asher? Really? Like you couldn't pick a better, you couldn't pick a worse time. You could have at least pulled Annalise to the side and asked her, but God, dog. And, you know, um, you know, Michaela's like, is that true? I'll kill you. And then we move forward to the end of the episode where we see a woman giving a eulogy of a funeral. And whose funeral do you guys think it is? It is none other than our girl, Annalise Keating. So the story, so the hashtag for this season is, and a, a big mystery is, who killed Annalise? And I'm like, Shonda, girl, I know this is not the way we're going to end this show with a dead Annalise. No, it's not how this is going to work for me. I would hope it's New West's mom.
But you guys, that was the episode. Very good opening episode. Really bummed that this is the final season of uh, How to Get Away with Murder, but I knew eventually it was going to come to an end. I didn't think it would be this soon, but I knew it was coming to an end. So you guys, like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.